Hi students and welcome to another e-lesson video, this one over Catch-22 in Postmodernism, helping you get ready to read our last novel of the year. As with all of these e-lesson videos, please feel free to pause and rewind at any time to take notes, rewatch, or get caught up. On this video we're going to take a look, of course, at some key facts about the novel, Joseph Heller, the author, talk a little bit about postmodernism, and then some tips for reading this novel. Some key facts. The full title is Catch-22. There's no alternative title. Written by Joseph Heller, published back in 1961. It's set on the uh, real island in the Mediterranean, uh, the island of Pianosa, which is just off the coast of Italy. Uh, however, the author admittedly, if you look at the, one of the very first pages in the book, takes some creative licenses with uh, the size of the island. It's a tiny, tiny island that would not have nearly enough room for the size of army base that is depicted in the book. However, it does, the island does exist. Uh, and it takes place during the uh, near the end of World War II, the last couple of years of World War II. The genre, this is fiction, it's a novel, it is postmodernist, and it is satire. Let's talk a little bit about Joseph Heller. He was born in 1923 in Brooklyn, New York. Died just a few years back in 1999 uh, on Long Island, but died of a heart attack, I believe. Some of his best-known works, not a lot. Uh, he wrote uh, novels, a few plays. These are perhaps his best-known novels. Something happened in 1974 in Closing Time in 1994. Closing Time, sort of an unofficial sequel to Catch-22 because it does revisit some of the characters uh, from the novel as they're adjusting to uh, post-war life uh, in New York City. But um, he really wasn't very prolific, especially after Catch-22, which was his first novel. Uh, in fact, uh, an interviewer once famous famously pointed out that uh, he hadn't written anything nearly as good as Catch-22 since Catch-22, and uh, Heller famously replied, well, who has? <laughs> Some of the common themes of the book, um, very anti-romantic treatment of war, kind of the demystification of war, so to speak, um, whereas a lot of uh, books pre the modern period tended to treat war with a very romanticized uh, point of view, uh, you know, the glory and nobility and honor of, of, uh, of uh, fighting, of, uh, you know, the patriotism of fighting for your country. Uh, Heller tends to take a very anti-romanticized view of war. Uh, he also tends to explore the helplessness of the individual who is in conflict with powerful institutions like big businesses and government. Uh, other bureaucracies, that sort of thing. And finally, he explores the inefficiency of those institutions, of those bureaucracies, and the paradoxes they often create, and how, uh, how people are supposed to uh, participate within their rules. Uh, postmodernism. Catch-22 is a postmodernist novel, so let's chat a little bit about what that is. Postmodernism, uh, the movement really began in the 1940s, kind of after World War II is when it really took off, and it's all the way up to the present. Uh, what postmodernism is, it's, uh, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the literary movement that followed modernism. Uh, some of its characteristics, there was a, an emphasis on impressionism and subjectivity in, in, in writing. As well as, uh, as well, the writers would experiment with uh, various fragmented forms, discontinuous narratives, random-seeming collages of different materials. Uh, you saw a little bit of this when we read Gatsby, uh, which is a modernist novel. Uh, the postmodernists just took that another step further. The narratives were even more fragmented. Uh, they were even told from even more nonsensical points of view. Uh, they were even more nonlinear, that sort of thing. Uh, we also saw a movement away from the apparent objectivity provided by those typical omniscient uh, narrators. Uh, instead, we had fixed narrative points of view, limited narrators, uh, and uh, who had clear-cut moral positions, who actually had some something to say within the novel and commented on the actions, rather than just sat back and, and watched, like uh, say the narrator character from The Scarlet Letter, for instance. Um, we read, again, this is very similar to the modernists, like the uh, character Nick Carraway in Gatsby. The postmodernists, very similar. They're uh, narrators often took part in the uh, in the uh, stories. Uh, beliefs very similar to those of the uh, those of the modernists, but where the modernists lamented kind of the end of the world their parents knew and grew up in, the po postmodernists sort of bought front row tickets to watch it all burn to the ground. Uh, it's just, it's just two different sides of the same coin, really. They both viewed the world in the same kind of harsh, realistic, and, uh, you know, brutal and gritty light, um, but they both tr had totally different attitudes toward um, 
toward what the what that meant for mankind, that sort of thing. Uh, th- this is another scholar's view of postmodernism that can put it far more eloquently than I can with my head congestion. Uh, she said this, Many modernist works try to uphold the idea that works of art can provide the unity, coherence, and meaning which has been lost in most of modern life. Art will do what other human institutions fail to do. Postmodernism, in contrast, doesn't lament the idea of fragmentation, provisionality, or incoherence, but rather celebrates that. The world is meaningless. Let's not pretend that art can make meaning then. Let's just play with nonsense. And a lot of times when you're reading Catch-22, uh, you are going to feel that that sort of nonsense, that sort of meaninglessness uh, that uh, the, prime, uh, the protagonist, Yossarian, is grappling with. Some tips for reading. I don't usually do this for uh, any of the books that we assign, uh, but it's kind of necessary with Catch-22 because it's such a non-traditional narrative. Catch-22 is told in a non-linear way, and you've probably read non-linear stories before. Heck, Gatsby was uh, non-linear in places. The story kind of unfolded uh, at its own pace, not necessarily in order of the events as they would have happened had it been real. Uh, so you're probably used to this. Uh, Catch-22, though, takes it to a whole whole other level. The entire book is told out of order. The book actually begins toward the end of the action, if that makes any more, se- if that makes any sense. Um, the action of the book then kind of moves back and forth through a series of flashbacks and flash forwards, oftentimes without any sort of time reference. You, you're never going to get a well, five years previous or ten years later or anything like that. Uh, it just kind of starts, and you have to kind of slowly piece together when you are reading, if that makes any sense. So, um, when you're reading and you get a little bit confused about the the timeline, let certain events in the novel guide you through the narrative. Uh, there are certain events that are mentioned over and over and over again: the death of Snowden, um, the uh, the Milo bombing the uh, the base, that sort of thing. That uh, those events, that by how the characters talk about it, you can tell where you are kind of in the narrative. Oh, this is before the de- uh, Snowden's death. Oh, this is after Milo bombed the squadron, that sort of thing. So let those events kind of guide you through the narrative. And if that fi- if that fails, this is what I tell my students every year we read this. Just hang on for dear life, hang on for the ride, and sort everything out later. Just enjoy the book. It's hilarious without really knowing the uh, step by step progression of the storyline. All right, that's all I have to say about Catch Twenty Two and postmodernism. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to watch again, and I'll see you in class.